an interesting situation here with Jeff's um, Taylor 355CE. And there's a number of things that are going on here. And I'm going to just quickly take a quick tour over it. It's just one of those um, guitars that's, excuse me a minute, view interrupted. Uh, it's just one of those guitars that's interesting. So it's come here with the electrics not working. They're out at the, at the moment, partly in a bag over there. But so the pickups aren't working. I don't know about the one under there, but there. But I know that the ones attached to the underside are not working. Um, the guitar came to me with no strings on, so the first thing was to just kind of go in there and see if I could find out why this isn't working electronically. And what I learned quickly is that the system that's in here, the original Taylor system, is, is A, it's uh, discontinued, and B, it's known to be faulty, go faulty very quickly, and particularly the battery compartment can rot and so on and so forth and because it's discontinued there are only a certain number of parts you can get and then you don't quite know uh, the three pickups and they work in series so that if any one of them's broken the whole lot won't work or the pickups won't work so if you're going to check out why it's not working you have to find a way of testing all three um, I'm not getting any resistance on the coils on these two so I've taken them off for a minute um, and so there's a kind of, we, we were at a, oh, there's something else here which you can't really see from here, but um, somebody in the past has, has carved slots into here, massive slots. Now, it isn't that easy to see them, to be fair, when the pegs are all in, but it's a real mess in there. And it's been done to, by the looks of it, to give some better brake angle for the strings. Now, having, having said all that, the brake angle isn't, too bad, although I can, oh, sorry, I break angle. So uh, come, uh, come full circle, without the strings on, I really wasn't in any position to say what the action's like and therefore what is the kind of, what's needed with this. What I saw was these great big trenches dug here, um, which made me think that somebody's lowered the action via the saddle to a point where they've worried about the break angle and they've dug into these two um, increase, uh, increase the brake angle and allow the strings to play, um, which would be understandable if this wasn't a bolt-on neck guitar. So to come to any judgment about it, I figured I'm going to have to put a set of strings on it and see where it actually ends up, whether it ends up really high and this is at its last ditch, uh, or whether even that the strings, I didn't even know what the angle was over here. So what I'm seeing is this is not a terrible angle. I mean, of course, they've achieved it by this notching business, the slotting business. In fact, the slotting is gone far further than the angle needs. So uh, has somebody done it in the past? Then has somebody at the right place said, hang on a minute, you don't need to do that because we can change the neck setup here. Jeff doesn't recall anyone doing that. And to be fair, and I don't know this isn't necessarily proof of it, but there is, you can see the um, Taylor sticker on there. Now people can sometimes take those off and put them back on. Um, but I wanted to get a sense of whether this actually needed a reset or whether, you know, what, what, what really has to, has to happen here. So it's been kind of an interesting one. And I, my answer, so I guess what I found, first of all, let's just put this into zoom out mode as far as I can. What I found is obviously having strung the guitar up just now. Well I figured that first of all I better waste a set of strings to find out how this thing actually plays because I don't think I could really make too much of a judgment about it without doing that. So first thing I did was well, not the first thing. The thing I did today was string it up. You'll hear the pickups moving about in there but Beautiful. Now, the action here is not high. If I had a 12 string like 
that played this well when I was a youngster, I would have been absolutely thrilled. Now the question I'm trying to figure out is, has it been achieved by reducing the saddle here to a point at which somebody's had to... No, let's put it another way around. If there were no gouges on the top here, would I look at this thing and say, actually, that's a pretty respectable low action. Would I look at it and say this is a pretty good action? There's there's a bit of break angle over here, playing that top one that should be the weakest one. Would I say that overall that's a good setup? And actually, the funny point is, yes, it is. So, the question we have is this: Is there anything technically wrong with that? as it is currently set? And the answer is no. Good. That's, well, that's, that's more than I knew earlier on. So I have to conclude, this is okay. What's wrong is that someone in the past has either, no, see, I can't, I've got no evidence that this is, the neck has been off and reset. Well, have I? Is there some tiny evidence down the edge there? Let's just, hold on a second. Sorry about the view. I just, Stand yonder guitar up there for a minute. Let's just zoom you in down the edge here, because there is, well, that might be some evidence. I don't know. See that? Little marks along there. There's little bits of wood filler. Now, I don't know exactly why, or are they wood filler? It's hard to tell. Maybe they aren't wood filler. Sorry, maybe they aren't wood filler. So, I don't know, There's, there isn't uh, evidence. I'm looking down here, can I see any evidence that the angle in here has moved at any amount? Well, there's a, there's a slight gap, but there should be because it's a bolt-on neck. You wouldn't expect to see it um, kind of permanently. It wouldn't be sprayed over. Uh, hard to tell. So that's really puzzling whether this is, um, had the neck off and the action being reset, I don't know. Or whether somebody has just incautiously cut, cut this the way they've cut it. Or, put another way, what would happen if these slots weren't cut the way they've been cut on the, on the rear strings? Would this thing play okay? Or, has, or, ha, or does it have to be cut to make this play this way? Um, I look at the, the what I would measure it by the last threat action, but everyone else likes the twelfth. What would I get out of that? Uh, let's take the, the. So we're looking at that's not bad at all. That's I would call that last fret three millimeters. I wouldn't the lowest I'd ever go on any acoustic guitar, and that would be probably feel or sound too low for anybody else. Is um, is two at the lowest, and I'd probably aim for 2.5. So this is currently a three millimeters low E, which, like I say, is not bad at all for a 12-string guitar. Um, oops, and approximately, it's very hard to see with all these strings. A little bit, perhaps a little bit high on the on the E side, uh, the high E side for me, but that's uh, 1.75. 1.75, again, not really that bad. Oh yeah, 1.75. Not, not bad at all. So, okay, look, as far as the action goes then, what's wrong is only, even given the, the existing gouges in here, the action is, is decent. The next question is then, do we need to do the, re, the neck reset thing. And we talked about it as if we had needed to do the neck reset, um, had this, in other words, had, did this, had this setup either played really badly up here or really hard to play up here, or uh, were, had there been too little break angle over here to play anything, then a neck reset would have been the sensible thing to do. But since the, it does play okay, the action here is decent and the break angle over here is actually playable whether it's achieved by the extra gouging or not, 
the, the thing as it stands is playable without a neck reset. Now the neck reset is something that we probably could, brackets, should order um, or, or get the shims for. Uh, why? Because then we can be in a position to do it later on should he need it. But this is a 2005 guitar, so it's been, it's been around a long time without changing too much shape, which is good, a very good sign, actually. Um, the, right, so biggest problem right now in Jeff's experience isn't the action. Holy cow, that is a beautiful action especially down there. So there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is the electronics don't work. Now, <laughs> back to the electronics, we have two options really. I could investigate further this, this original system, but we've got the original parts here, the original battery case, which is corroded to hell. I've had to repair it with all kinds of scratching, scraping, sanding, and as you can see here, tape, because this thing is, Whatever has happened, the acid that's been produced in the, these corroded batteries that were in here has melted and deformed the thing. It appears to have broken off great chunks of the side here. So I pretty much just about got this to work, but only with bits of tape and stuff. So to change the batteries, um, you, well, you, you wouldn't have to take this out each time, but eventually this would give up the ghost and you'd have to replace them. Anyway, so it's not ideal, but these things rot and that one's rotted like many of them have. So that's a bit iffy, but you may find a second-hand one. You can't buy a new one. You may find a second-hand one, but they go for quite huge prices. But that, that then doesn't help us with these pickups, which are gnarly, these ones. The first one was completely broken off. It's tiny little wires anyway. Um, as soon as you try and solder them, it starts to melt the plastic because they are such delicate little things. The preamp in here, it comes alive with the battery power, but nothing's happening from any of the pickups, which means, which means, let me think something, is there a way, should I, no, I can't. Which means the one possibility of making this system work again, assuming that the other things work, which I'm not sure they do, would be to f discover that the neck pickup underneath this, this fingerboard extension was in fact in some way broken or disconnected. It, in which case it's possible to um, fix it and, or buy, sorry, buy another one possibly, and they sell that pickup for about 40 quid. There is still some available, but you know, that's, a, that's basically that means going through all of this testing, trying to, trying to solder up these little impossibly tiny wires um, the problem with this thing, I think, in the original guitar is that over the years, what they do is they shackle the, these little pickups with their little very, very delicate wires. They shackle them to the main cable, which goes from the unit here to the phone connector at the back of here. So it's somewhere about there. And that runs around here and is stuck in place by with some little tabs. Those tabs have come undone along the way, but the wires to each individual pickup those wires are shackled quite tightly to the um, to the wire that gets stuck around here and when those when the tabs for that big chunky wire fall off that wire swings free and it drag, drags on these so they're stuck to the roof the underside of the soundboard and then they get pulled about and eventually that this broke off completely off one of them so there isn't really a good design for that you'd have to you'd have to be confident that, first of all, your pickups work, which I'm not convinced. Then you'd have to possibly add some wiring to extend the length so you could tack these little pickups into a safer position so that even if the main wiring came undone over the years, it wouldn't, it wouldn't automatically snap off. Because it was too short, basically. And I know why, because they don't want the rattling around. But um, there was no room for this big cable to fall loose and for it not to yank on the little wires. So. Um, but to even stand a chance, and I feel very relatively negative about trying to resurrect this whole system um, because when you've got several things that can be faulty at once, including this unit, it feels like you could spend days trying to diagnose it. And Jeff's sort of take on this was he, he just wants something that can play louder. He's not, you know, he currently doesn't have a, an expression system that works at all. 
not confident necessarily that we'll get one. Um, and he asked me to consider what else could we put in there that would end up with, that could stay the same, it doesn't have to remove that. Um, that could be the same or it could be plugged or filled or whatever. Um, and I, my mind immediately went to the um, LR bags uh, element system, the simple one, for example, um, which is an under saddle. Now, I know the whole thing about these Taylor ones is that they're microphones and a magnetic pickup here. So it's a richer sound, you would say, than the standard piezo. And it's more of an acoustic sound than the piezo, which is synthetic sound, totally. But I, I'm, I don't think that right now, Jeff even is that bothered about the distinction between those two. So what, he, what I hear from him is he wants a, he wants a guitar he can play at home, which he's got. Um, and he, but he wants to be able to plug it in and play it at a, a mic or whatever with friends. So I think to get back something that could be with it isn't, you know, another 300 quid plus installation, sending it away to Taylor, um, whether he's looking for, you know, he's looking for something that he can just uh, attach and, and more simply fit in. So I'm wondering whether uh, LR Bags Element, for example, go underneath the saddle here um, a little volume control inside of there, uh, followed up by a barrel coming out the back. And actually, since there's screw holes in here, um, that could be in a, a shaped piece of timber um, and hold on with screws into the back of here. So it wouldn't even change the, wouldn't, no, no drilling at the back required. So I'm gonna go and put this back in its box right now. Um, in fact, take it home, because then I'm gonna look at the um, LR bag stuff. I'm not confident uh, and also um, I think it's going to be a difficult one to talk to Taylor and say this action is no good therefore please send me the rel relevant um, shims because they'll look at this and they'll say well that action that action is very good it's very low which it is for a 12 string what I'd have to then argue is to show them photographs of these, um, somebody who's cut these slots, and they might say, well, that's just not our responsibility because somebody's done that and they shouldn't have done. And they'd be right about that. So I don't mind if this plays the, great the way it is. What I'd be interested to know is if I filled these, which I'd be happy to do, because I have a, I just have a feeling that these, um, these slots, if I, the question would be where it emerges from underneath. Yeah, it may be, it may be it's. Uh, the point is if, if they really are necessary to get that action, then it is viable to, re, to, to get the shims and reset. If I get the shims and reset, um, then it, it's worthwhile looking at the pickup that's under there. I think I have to, the difficult thing for me is I have to make, I have to make a, a, a call on whether I think this has been, whether that's never been adjusted and this has been, this good action has been achieved only by lowering this and that the person who did that has made these excessive slots in order to retain brake angle. And if whether, if I filled those in right now and the string went back to its tall angle, because what the, what the slotting does is it allows it allows. How do we do this? Um, that's not a very good diagram. It, and it basically, it allows the string to come from lower down, um, and therefore the break angle is greater. Um, when when you push this point of the string backwards, it comes to the surface of the guitar over here which is further away and the angle is much reduced. So by slotting it, you allow the string to emerge closer to the saddle. Um, and I have to be confident that that, that this um, slotting has allowed that. And I, I think it does, because if I put a pencil mark, I don't know whether i show you this close up. I'll do it here first. If I assess where this um, string kind of intersects the surface somewhere about there. So zoom you in and see what you can see. So so you can see the 
point at which it breaks the surface. Um, if we didn't have the, all that slotting, I mean, the, first of all, there is a factory slotting, uh, which you can see there. That's factory slotting. No, it's that comes out about what uh, two, three millimeters in front of the peg. And now you can obviously see uh, which is the best one to look at. None of them really. Uh, if we look at this one here, then um, the the factory slot slots to God. Let me try and put my pencil where you can see it. The factory slots two mils would end up would terminate there. That would be the same length as that one there. And then you can see that we've, after that, we've got all of that space there. So there is a considerable length added to each of these slots. And, and the same applies here. We go at this end, the factory slot would end about, uh, that one's been added too, changed too. So the factory slot would be the two or three mils there. And you can see that all of this distance here is, um, it's been, gouged. Ah, so if I'm convinced, I am convinced, if I'm convinced that this, only because of this slotting that this, this desired action has been attained, and I, th I think that's probably realistic, I would then say, look, it's fair to call for the, um, uh, for some shims for this, and then re-shim this, uh, I think we'd, we'd, well, I think I know, we'd, we'd put in a taller um, saddle, tusk saddle, this is tusk anyway, but, or new bone, but we'd put a taller tusk saddle in, um, but before restringing it, I would then uh, aim to seal up these slots with um, a resin or a glue, a uh, glue and ebony dust mix, just to, but I mean, again, it, it, you could say, well, look, it's not a problem. But the alternative is we could just leave all of that side of it until the point at which it becomes less playable because it's working. That's the thing I've got to keep in mind. I'm just worried about the technicality of it. And at some point, this guitar can still have the shims and we can still do it. But why wouldn't we hold on to... The only reason we wouldn't leave it till that point where, where it became unplayable for Jeff is because by leaving it, we do away with the option to look under there and check test that pickup. But I got a feeling from talking to Jeff today that he doesn't want any more to do with this corroded, rusty, old, obsolete thing for which you can't get a full set of parts anyway. Um, so I think my verdict right now, live on camera on a Saturday night, my verdict is this plays great. The slots, the extended slots, notches are on them in and of themselves aren't a problem they're ugly but you could fix them at any later date and i think at a date where this action raise rises beyond the recorded action i've got here then we can look at shimming the neck taking the label off removing the neck telling the measurements and then saying to a tailor and we this has only been achieved with this excessive notching here and we want to restore it to its you know its prime glory so i think we will make that call and we'll go looking for a uh, lr bag system simple-ish good quality system that will because there's no there's no um thingy under there i mean the thing also about the lr bag system is it's far more robust than this um this uh this any of this stuff this is the, all the wires can't, I had to replace those wires they were corroded through and through so everything about this and including the wires to the pickups is just spindly fiddly and very un, uninspiring confidence wise um, and also the thing that you have to I mean the, the Taylor videos show a guitar with its top off and they show look here's how you stick your cable all the way around to here and then you make those connect there and there and then this gets tacked up well, you try doing all of that with your bare hands in the dark, you know. Yes, it made me actually think today, why, why don't they have a guitar that you can take the top off or the back off and do this work? Because that would be so much better. Not impossible. Anyway, okay, I'm going to put this baby back in a case. Or am I going to slack this? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to slack 
the strings off off camera. I'm going to take out the pickup stuff so there's nothing rattling around. I'm going to tighten, retighten the strings. We're going to keep it there as a nice playing guitar so we don't waste the new strings because we can we can make our piece here without I'll make a, a I'll make a, a tracing of this and we can make an insert to go in here which will screw in place, replace this. The battery uh, sits on a piece of Velcro inside for the LR bag system. So we can do it all without having any major alteration. And just as this is only, this strap button here is only held on by these four little screws. Um, in fact, I'll use this as the template. Um, same way as a piece of you know, hardwood um, would sit in there and hold the, the jack as well in the same way. Um, the only difference being is that the well this this is quite is it supported this this the LR bags has a long piece like this which sits there so that, I think that would sit comfortably in there it would pull down but this would support it from rotating down anyway I think that's a good thing to look at so I just thought it might be an interesting look over um, more more I suppose the interesting bit really I find is the figuring out what's the best thing to do. But I think we've got to come from the angle that this plays beautifully um, right now. And it's only the fact that it doesn't amplify that's that's mainly Jeff's problem. But he, he was interested in the fact that I spotted these gougings and pointed out that it shouldn't have happened to this guitar. It should have, whoever did that should have raised the brake angle by raising the saddle and should have made that entirely possible by fitting shims or replacing changing the shims but again I you know I forgive some people that don't know that we only know what we know and, and in some ways um, Taylor are a little bit can be as far as consumers are concerned it can be a little bit opaque about um, first of all the whole thing about having shims and a bolt on neck which make that possible so you don't have to mess around with that that's not massively well known or publicized um, and i think one of the ways that would really solve that problem is if they put a full set of shims in each guitar and made a big deal about this is you have the te the method the technology in this box to reset this neck if and when like most guitars do it changes over in its history uh, in its future and, and without having to cut down saddles or anything. And a decent luthier, even if it's not a trained, somebody who isn't trained by Taylor, somebody who's got half a brain and has the pack of supplied shims could, and some obvious PDF you can get hold of could do a safe job on this because it's, it's kind of foolproof in a way. You just change the shims in pairs. Um, and if it's too high, you find it's too high. And if it's too low, you go down. Um, what I tend to do is change to the approximately the right one or right pair and then sometimes if I'm looking for a specific number here I'll take it down you know a tenth of a mil there just to get to the exact round number that I want but it's a minor adjustment here anyhow that's enough for now so yeah I just thought it might be a, an interesting conundrum but what I, I'm surprised by is how nice that plays so I'm really pleased about that